Hi friends, uh, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bikes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel. Today we have an interesting topic on how to create a you know advanced Selenium framework with your real time uh, dashboard. Right? We will speak what is a real time dashboard. Okay. Uh, but before that, uh, there are so many so many tutorials available in online if you want to learn about how to create a framework. But uh, you know, they, uh, frankly speaking, they haven't, you know, quenched my thirst. So what I have done, I have done a lot of research, you know, uh, you know, creating my own framework, you know, contributing to open source, get the feedback from the community and, and then slowly increase, you know, uh, adding more features. So that's how I have arrived at, you know, uh, some uh, matured framework now. So I just want to share what I have learned so far. Okay. So, so let's first understand how easy to use this, you know, uh, framework before I get started with all the, you know, Java, Selenium and other stuff, you know, first we need to understand what we're going to achieve. If you don't know what we're going to achieve, it is really hard you know to imagine so this is the real time dashboard that i have created using kibana if you don't know what is kibana you know all those things that's okay for now because i will teach them everything okay so don't worry so first let's understand how easy to run the test okay if even if you want to share this framework to your manual testers or your product owner they can easily run the test so you just need to open the test data sheet okay go to the run manager this run manager is going to contain all the test cases that you want to run Suppose I have my test case one uh, with the description of test case one, or my, I have a login test with uh, you know some description like to log into the website uh, with the particular credentials and want to check the home page, whatever. And I want to run this particular test case. Then I just need to change this to yes. If I don't want to run you know this particular test case for this build, then I can just simply change it to no. It's as simple as that. If you put no here, it, the test case won't be executed. If you put yes, it will be executed. And the invocation count will give you a liberty to run the test case as many times you want. Suppose I want to run this test case 10 times because this particular test will create an order in the backend which I want to you know, uh, use it for some other purpose, Okay, some test data generation. So I can run it 10 times, 50 times or 100 times, whatever the number you want. And this priority here will choose, it will decide on what what basis you want to run the test case. Suppose I want to run the data provider testers first, then I want to run this test case one, then I want to run the test case two. You know, the, the priority decides in which order you want to run the test, right? It's very easy, right? Now we also have other options with our framework. So suppose for the test case one, I want to run it in different with the different set of test case uh, test data. For example, you know. For my test case one, I want to, you know, first iteration, I want to run it with this bunch of test data. And the second, you know, second iteration, I want to run it in Firefox with particular set of test data, right? So you just need to add a particular line, okay? Even if you want to include one more option, you just need to include a line and then give that value as test case one and then choose whether you want to run this particular iteration or not. Suppose in your prod environment, you want to, you don't want to run this particular set of test data, then you can choose no. If you want to run, just choose yes, is as simple as that. So you give all your test data values here. You know, if even if you want to add more test data, the Excel sheet, you are free, free to do that. Okay, so it's as simple as that. Okay. After doing all this thing, you just need to go, you know, you can run your palm.xml as, uh, you know, Maven test, or you can simply run your test engine. For now, I'm just running it as test engine. Let's go to the real time dashboard that we have. Also, will give us a, you know, results at real time. Suppose for now, let's say train, uh, you know, this is a current count maybe. So now that I have started a new test case. Okay. So let's see what's happening. Okay. I have my browser open. So it will update the dashboard in real time. You can understand how many tests is getting passed or failed at, at the, at the runtime. You don't have to wait for three hours to check, you know, you, you know, you forget to update some config. After three hours, you realize all your tests got failed. Then you need to go and configure the, you know, again that, and you need to rerun your test. If you notice the skip count is now four because the last test that I ran got skipped. Okay. These are all just a sample test cases. I have made it some to pass, some to fail and some to skip so that we can understand how this, you know, works. Hope you all can see that. Okay, so now if you notice the count will also change. Okay, so you also have a very cool dashboard, right? So you don't, you know, with the with the vertical bar diagram, with the pie diagram, and you know, and also the simple count. Now ten, four, and three 
it now changed it to 11 4 and 3 so this is how it is so your dashboards keeps updating so that you can understand whether your there is some problem with your build or not if if there are more failures right you can just stop the build fix the problems and then rerun the build it's, you don't have to wait for 3 hours or 8 hours for the entire test suite to complete this is really cool right if, again if you want to extend this to across your company you can do that you can create multiple dashboards which manages multiple projects right as a necessity you are you are you, you have to do all these things right so let's wait for the another one test case to complete you know and also i think now the 13 tests got passed four got you know skipped another and we also have the extent reports as always and if you are new here and if you haven't watched my extent reports tutorial i will leave the link in the description please check it. you know please check it as well and if you notice this is a very real you know cool dashboard from extent reports you also have a real time dashboard but the extent reports is like you you get the reports only after you complete all your test now is this is interesting right so what and all we need you know to learn all these things right prerequisite yeah you need to know the basics of java and selenium um i will try to do enough justice if you don't know that but if you are having a very good very you know little knowledge about java and selenium it will be really helpful and you need to have a lot of patience to learn there may be time where things may not go your way you know which is just working fine in my machine but it's not working in your case because you, you have completely followed my tutorials uh, there, there can be cases but please keep the patience here we can solve everything okay if you if you need any support please reach out to me i am here to help you guys okay and you also need a kind heart to subscribe to my channel okay if you're new here please do subscribe like my channel and share with your friends if you really find it interesting okay and so this these are all the you know uh, tools and techs we are going to use here, you know in our framework so we're going to use java as our programming language primarily and we also going to use selenium to create web ui test selenium is an open source i hope you all know what is selenium right so that's why you are here and testng is the unit testing framework that we're going to use we're going to leverage a lot of cool things from testng like their uh, cool listeners their data providers they have very good you know solid uh, framework and this is a very good framework right we're going to use a lot of cool features from testng again maven we're going to use it for as a build tool uh, it, you can do a lot of purpose but for us you know we, we're going to use maven you can also use gradle that doesn't matter but for now we are going to use maven assetj is another cool assertion library that we're going to use we, you can also use testng you don't have to use this but i thought okay this, it has a lot of good features so we'll, we'll also use that in our framework and we, we're going to use page object model uh, for, for maintaining our page layers. And uh, uh, we'll also use singleton factory and factory design person whenever whenever we have a uh, you know, chance to use them. OK, we'll try to use these design patterns across our framework. Okay, because normally people will ask uh, what is singleton you know, in an interview. So we'll, we'll try to implement in our framework so that we can definitely give them a very good example. Okay, and we'll also use Page Factory uh, from Selenium uh, for for web locators maintenance. But there is a lot of problems with Page Factory, so we'll also see how we can also utilize by by class and string. Okay, so you know it, it is not mandatory to use Page Factory. So, but you know predominantly the industry is using Page Factory. Everyone is you know going towards it. But we'll also see why we need to use Page, page Factory or how can we you know avoid even using Page Factory. Again, we also learn about thread, uh, thread local, which will give us a thread safety. If you don't know what is thread local and thread safety, it's completely all right. We're going to see that in de detail, okay? How, how it's going to help us to run all our tests in parallel. So, yeah. And we'll also see the, the extent reports. It's one of the coolest library I have ever found in Java for, for, for creating a reports. So we'll see that. If you're new here, you have to check my playlist. We have already videos uploaded for the extent reports. Uh, you know, feel free to reach, you know, uh, reach out to me if you have any doubts as well. And we'll also use extended Excel sheet for test data maintenance. Like I already told, we will keep all our, uh, you know, our, our heart going to be the Excel Excel sheet because anyone can operate it. Even you the manual testers or your BA or your product owner, whoever wants to run the test, they can simply run by changing the data in the Excel sheet. So we're giving more power to the manual testers, right? Yeah. And we also going to use property files or JSON as our configuration file so that, you know, uh, manual testers can go and update that to run some, suppose you want to run it in a dev or your, uh, your 
uh, UAT URL. So they want to just change the URL. Okay, you know they can simply go and change it if you if you put it in a config file. Right. So we'll also see how we can use that. We also use some cool listeners. If you don't understand what is a listener, that's completely okay. We will see about it. How it can save a lot of uh, you know time and energy for us. So we keep that. You know, uh, we'll we'll keep that in our framework. And we'll also see how to run our test in cloud. I suppose you want to run your test in browser stack because your your company have have a license with browser stack or your perfect or whatever cloud you have, or you want to run it in a Dockerized Selenium grid. Okay, you can also see how we can do that. But most importantly, to run all these things, we need to have a you know our our framework to support this parallel cross browser testing, right? So we will make sure that our framework is you know compatible to run our test in Docker or Selenium grid, right? We'll also see how we can use, uh, you know, ELK Docker images to produce a real-time dashboard that I actually showed you here. This is the real-time dashboard side. It can also give you pass, fail, skip count. You can you can customize this dashboard. It's just a dashboard, okay? You can customize like the way you want. If you want to add more more uh, diagrams here, you can also do that, okay? We will we'll see in depth what is Elasticsearch, what is Kibana, you know, how it can be useful in our case, okay? And we'll also use try to use solar glint to to write a clean code okay writing clean code is always a difficult task guys so anyone can code you know anyone can code right? if you write 100 lines of code if you write 200 lines of code if you make the you know things to work that's it everything is working but how how good we are writing our code is it's very important so we're going to use this sonar lint it's a plugin in your ide you can use it in eclipse or intellij whatever the ide you use you have a plugin called sonar lint we will integrate that and it, it's going to help us to write a clean code okay we'll see how to do that and we'll also try to use a lot of java e concepts that uh, our testers normally ignore so we'll try to use all these method references lambdas and streams in our code and we'll try to leverage them in our framework. And at last, uh, we'll also try to do the integration with Selenoid. Okay, Selenoid is a customized Docker, Docker grid. So they have a lot of really good features like, you know, you can have your video, you know, video of your uh, execution, okay? And then you also can view the execution running in the Docker, you know, with the dashboard, all those things. So a lot of good stuff available in Selenoid, okay? We'll also see that, okay? It sounds interesting, right? So. Uh, I know I, ha I have very few things to say now, but, uh, you know, I have covered everything. So let's hope, uh, you know, we'll cover all these things. So keep, keep uh, you know, watching this channel for more updates. Thank you, guys.